So this is a shade that looks at American art in really the years between the two world wars, so in the 1920s and 1930s. And this is a period in America which is, well, incredibly important for our idea of America. It's uh, the Roaring Twenties, it's jazz, it's the Depression as well in the 1930s. And yet, although some of that world is very familiar to a European audience, the paintings on the whole are not. And so, one of the things we wanted to do in this show is to introduce some very great artists like Charles Sheila and Charles Demuth and, uh, and others to a European audience. And the idea that we focused on really was this idea of coolness, of reserve, of emotional restraint, which I think you do find in all these paintings. Uh, if you look at the paintings in the show, there are no people in any of them. They're often, though, paintings of the modern world, of the city, of machines, where you might expect to see people, and yet we can't find them. What we know about and what we think we know about America in the 1920s and 30s is different than what you will see in this exhibition. We know of the 20s as the roaring 20s. It's the age of the flapper, of jazz, of prohibition, but everyone's still having enough alcohol to drink. And then the 30s is always known as the Depression era, and we think of bread lines and starvation and unemployment. And I wanted to look at the entire period and look at especially the visual arts and this um, idea that throughout these artists are removing people, painting in a very precise, clean, crisp way as if they're hiding their emotion or they're controlling it, keeping it under control. And so it, I think, gives us an attitude and aesthetic that surprises us from this period. So the 1920s and 30s are a period of enormous social change and so it's a period in which New York is being born, the great skyscrapers, the Empire State Building, the Chrysler Building are being built. Uh, it's a moment of economic boom in the 1920s and then economic bust in the 1930s. So huge actually extremes of experience. And what's quite interesting in this exhibition is how, in some ways, how little of that comes through. There is, though, I think, an anxiety in some of these paintings, this, the emptiness that one finds in them. There are artists trying to respond to this new world of modernity and a very particularly American take on it. The modern world, in, if you live in New York, as many of these artists did, it's very evident, the modernity of the city at that point. And I think that's something that you can see reflected in these paintings. The American artists are in some ways following what's happening in Europe. After World War I, a lot of artists return to a kind of classicism, giving structure to their paintings. And the Americans will do it in an even stronger way because they're thinking of it as a way of showing a new national identity. And we've tried to trace that through this exhibition. So the first room is about abstraction. Different experiments with European movements, so things like Cubism and future Futurism. The American artists know about it, but they want to just take little bits of it and do their own thing. And so you'll see some of those individual works by artists like Marsden Hartley or Patrick Henry Bruce, where they're going to be painting in a very precise way, um, but in abstraction, meaning reducing objects from the real world to the most simple elements. And then the most important room in the exhibition is the second room when you're in the city or um, out by the factory and this is what's been called precisionism because it's so precise it's so exact and this is really the heart of what we're trying to show these scenes of empty cities almost mysterious and then the third room moving to the countryside really and the artists using that same aesthetic but for rural American scenes barns the countryside and of course, in the final room, just before the end, we discover Hopper, who is well known, um, but maybe we haven't seen this Hopper, the really focusing on that frozen, cinematic, suspenseful quality of his art. Edward Hopper is a key artist in American art history. He's sort of um, 20s, 30s, 40s, but he doesn't fit categorization. His works are sometimes called realist, but there's a little abstraction. They are telling stories, but not completely. The figures in them sometimes don't talk to each other. And why we wanted to include Hopper is that we felt that um, so many of his city scenes are about freezing time 
creating just one suspenseful moment. And often, the examples we chose either have no people or just one or two. And then you can't forget that Hopper got his start as an illustrator. He did um, drawings, caricatures, and he continued to make prints throughout his career. So we wanted to include some of those prints, some that are very um, familiar to audiences, um, as a way to remind viewers that Hopper's not only about painting. All the paintings in the show come from the United States and we have some really spectacular loans here including the figure five in, I saw the figure five in gold which I'm standing beside which is one of the great icons of American modernism. Uh, but we also have wonderful paintings by George O'Keefe, by Edward Hopper, by Charles Sheeler and, and other works by Demuth and many of which have never come to this country before. George O'Keefe is a really well-known artist, and we have just a few of her works, but maybe some that aren't so familiar. Everyone thinks of O'Keefe as um, an abstract artist or working on these huge flowers. She got her start by making very abstract works on paper that um, were shown to the gallery dealer Alfred Stieglitz in New York. And he was so delighted, he said, finally, a woman on paper. And he started to get to know her. He gave her many exhibitions, really built her career. But what's exciting is she didn't do the same thing over and over. She evolved and changed. And some of the works in this exhibition, her scene of the city, for example, in the 1920s, she decided she wanted to paint skyscrapers because she felt that it shouldn't be only the men painting the big buildings, that she wanted to be able to do that too. And she exhibited them. She made sometimes very large paintings. And then we have a work in the third gallery that she made in New Mexico. And she moved away from this New York City. She moved out to New Mexico and continued continued to work for the rest of her very long career, interested in the light and the colors that she could find in New Mexico that were so different than the East Coast. So that's George O'Keefe. One of the things that's very interesting in this show, I think, is these American artists are very keen to establish a particular American type of art. They're obviously aware of what's going on in Europe, and indeed many of them worked in Europe and then familiar with artists like Picasso and Leger and, and other modernist painters within Europe. But what we see happening, I think, in this exhibition is these artists trying to establish something particularly American. And one of those things is this coolness. It's an adjective that is used to describe these artists and also one that is seen as particularly American. And so that's one of the themes that we hope we can explore in this show. The whole title of the exhibition, America's Cool Modernism, was something that I wanted to explore. This term cool that we always think of as being associated more with the 60s, 1960s in America, in fact was used very early in the 20th century. And here I'm using it mostly to talk about that kind of other forgotten meaning of cool, calm, collected, reserved, refined keeping your emotions under control. And I felt that that was a good term to express this sense of really careful, precise, refined aesthetic that these artists are using. And especially some of the critics are using it. They're talking about these artists as cool austerity or cool scientific precision. And so it seemed like a good way to also just get an intriguing um, possibility into the title that would encourage people to learn more and come and see for themselves. Modernism is a word we use all the time, right? And it's associated a lot with this early 20th century period. So you have to look at what did it mean then? And the artists use it for everything. They want to be modern. They think that being modern means making abstraction or using bright colors or maybe riding in an automobile. Everything could be modern if it was new and of that moment. And so I think that the term modernism in art is appropriate for these particular artists because they really do want to look at what's of their time and what they can do that's new. Especially in the first room, uh, you will notice that many of these Americans are in fact traveling to Europe. They're aware of what the European modernism um, is doing. Uh, they've seen examples of works by Picasso and Matisse, um, these French modernists, but they're not going to try and imitate. They're going to try and adapt or think about it. Um, Paul Strand is an exciting photographer who is the first to use photography to explore what some of the painters are doing. Abstraction, you can invent things. Photography, you have to look at what's really there. And so he's using camera 
in a new way to get abstraction through photography? I think if one looks at the works in the show, one is aware that although they're often very different, the paintings, they do have certain things in common. And one of them is this sort of refusal to show the brushstroke of the artist. There's a sort of lack of artistic personality, if you like, a desire to not reveal oneself, which I think is very particular to the works in this show. And so, personally, I find that both very seductive, but they're also paintings that keep their distance, that, that don't reveal themselves. And I think that is something that, it, when people were writing about these works, was seen as particularly American about them and relating to the modern American city as well. We've worked on this exhibition for about three years and from the beginning we knew we wanted O'Keeffe, we knew we wanted Hopper, we knew we wanted works by Charles Demuth, Charles Sheeler. These are names that aren't very familiar here, but they're very important at this time period, especially for this kind of um, empty, absent um, aesthetic. And then very early we decided to start to introduce some of these artists who are less well known. So some of the artists are only represented by one work of art, Patrick Henry Bruce, um, Morton Schomburg. These are artists who have been forgotten and we wanted to introduce them just to maybe invite people to study them more or learn about them or question what do they know. And we also very much from the beginning wanted to include photography, printmaking, not only painting. We included one silent film, an avant-garde um, film that was made in 1920 by um, Paul Strand and Charles Sheeler. So both of them were working in photography. Charles Sheeler bought a motion picture camera, a movie camera, and he wanted to explore really the limit between still photography and moving photography. So they took this camera out in New York. Other people were doing this too, but this happens to be one of the films that remains. And they're filming sort of straight shots, just watching the people moving by our workers. You will find people in the film where you're not finding them in the photographs. It's not a story, it's just one day from morning to evening, um, but it's an important, it became influential afterwards and so we wanted to include that. There's a lot of things we can talk about the exhibition, so much happening during this period. Um, we, from the beginning, were looking to include African American artists in the show, but the Harlem Renaissance, which is happening at this time, these artists are depicting human beings a lot. This is the whole point. They want to be visible. They want to show themselves, their communities, African Americans actually living and working. So we chose, it's kind of a funny thing we did, we chose two works by Jacob Lawrence, an African American artist. 23 years old, he made this whole series of works called the Great Migration Series, and most of them show people, but a few of them don't. And so we chose just two where there's no people to kind of introduce that into the exhibition, maybe help people think about what else is happening and who is being removed when you don't depict the people. Is it um, even a subconscious way of controlling and ordering the world by removing anything that's different? The exhibition has benefited from yeah, loans from the Terra Foundation for American Art, but also exceptional loans from the Metropolitan Museum. Um, some of those works have never left the United States. So there's Americana by Charles Sheeler that has never left the United States. And I think, and, and even from the National Gallery in Washington, there's a huge, beautiful, rare painting by Edward Steichen that has not crossed the Atlantic since it was first exhibited in Paris in 1922. So there's some um, exciting new things I think that it's a one-time chance to see um, in this exhibition here. <laughs>